Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesdays with Nina. I'm Nina, and you can write to me with your questions to TuesdaysWithNina at gmail.com. And actually, you've been sending in a lot of questions. Um, and today, actually, the question is quite involved enough and uh, I think applies to enough people that I will spend the entire um, time today on one question. So a young woman wrote to me, and I took notes because it was a very long letter. Um, she and her fiancé were both raised in very conservative religious households, and they consciously, over time, just de uh, decided to limit their sexual interaction with each other, um, which was fine with both of them. And about a year and a half into their relationship, they started becoming sexually active with each other, and she was ecstatic. She got wet from cuddling. She was really excited about it. They did good, hot, excellent, everything sex was supposed to be. Then they started living together, and she says now sex is a constant battle. And they've tried toys, they've tried movies, she gets annoyed when he wants it. It's a problem now. <laughs> so mentally, she thinks that anything consenting adults do is perfectly fine. She's not thinking that people deserve to go to hell. But she's asking, is there something I'm not getting? She says she's asking something she's not getting uh, that I might be able to point out to her. Because on one hand, she has a belief that consensual adult activity is fine. And on the other hand, is her personal experience where sex is not fun anymore. It's not what it used to be. She doesn't care much about it anymore, etc. What is she missing? So my first um, reaction is, it is likely due to something in her upbringing um, where uh, the early training she gets for, what, 15, 18, 20 years, um, she's trying to change that around in a couple of years. And you can tell it's not as easy as all that. She can tell it's not as easy as all that. So first, good for her for uh, realizing that she wants to address this issue and not thinking, okay, that's just the way it has to be, you know, every couple falls out of love with each other. And I would recommend a couple of things is certainly keeping a journal um, and trying to get behind the initial feeling she gets. So if she when she starts thinking about sex, there's the first image that comes to our mind, or the first thought that comes to our mind, and we often take that to be the truth. Um, and we don't investigate it any further because it's true. So uh, by journaling uh, a belief or a thought or a feeling that she's having, um, and then sitting with it or meditating on it or cogitating on it, and really trying to see what's behind it, she might be able to tease out what our... Um, uh, residual, uh, what is residual from her upbringing and what might actually be true. She did not report anything going wrong in the relationship other than sex, not they don't seem to be having money problems or other kinds of issues. It, she's just talking about sex. Um, obviously, she didn't say she's working two jobs, she's going to school, you know, so many things can decrease our libido, certainly stress, overwork, being tired, money worries, family problems, etc. Uh, but she didn't report any of that. So the only problem she's reporting is sex. I think she's young, but certainly, you know, obviously go to the doctor, get your hormones checked, because, you know, we could, that could be a part of it. I doubt it. You're young. She's young, sorry. Um, but, I don't, but it could be. It could be. But our libido is partly our responsibility. So I would recommend to her that she, um, take time to do conscious uh, masturbation or mindful masturbation and really get to the bottom of her issue with um, sex pleasure these days. And the reason to do it alone uh, is that when we're alone in a room, we don't have to worry about what the other person is thinking, are we doing it right, are we getting there fast enough, etc. And she might not even get to an orgasm. It's not about masturbation for an orgasm. It's about masturbation as a way to keep ourselves in her body and because sex pleasure is where her sticking point is, by engaging in, in a low level of sex pleasure, by touching herself, um, the issues will come up, the feelings will come up, the thoughts will come up, and her um, training will come up to her head, uh, into her foregrain, and she'll be able to look at it more clearly. So using sex pleasure to stay in our bodies while these thoughts swirl around in our heads and, uh, and become a little bit more clear. And this may take, you know, a dozen times or more to do it, uh, to get to the bottom of it, but sooner or later she'll understand what her issue actually is. I would not be surprised if the issue had nothing to do with the fiancé, had 
everything to do with her training, maybe an incident that happened to her a long time ago, or just the enormity of the weight of the judgment that was placed upon people um, who are raised in a strictly religious background, because most religions job is to suppress what I consider a more natural, robust sexual expression. It's their job to channel it into marriage only. It's their job to channel it into babies only. It's their job to channel it and not let it go out, get off the leash and go free-ranging. So she might be having residual guilt about it and instead of uh, being able to say that I feel guilty, I feel bad about this, she may be thinking uh, it comes up as losing interest. Uh, so I do think it has something to do with her upbringing, as she thought. And what to do about it, I think, has a, uh, she can take her body in her own hands, so to speak, and sit with herself and calm herself and pleasure herself and see what comes up. And that's what it works that way for me. Um, every time I masturbated past an emotional sticking point, a new piece of my own information would come from the back of my head to the front of my head, and I would be able to go, oh, okay, that's what's going on. And as soon as we are able to recognize, oh, that's what's going on, the issue often either goes away completely at that time or diminishes greatly um, and in intensity and its effect on our lives. And the more we do that, the more knowledge about ourselves that we gather through this method, the more we can put down and release the ideas, attitudes, beliefs, and assumptions about sexuality that no longer work for us. Most of our ideas about sexuality were put into us by the culture, by our families, by our churches, and now that we're adults, we get to figure out what of any of this do I want to keep? Does any of it make sense to me? Do I, do I believe any of it, or is it just something I'm going with because I've always heard it this way? And often we don't know how deep the conditioning is until we try to operate off of the axis to we deviate from it. So this woman is deviating from her training um, by engaging premarital sexual activity, even though he was the, they were each other's first relationship. They they are faithful to each other. They are monogamous. They are not hanging from the chandeliers, going to swing parties. But still, it could be just enough deviation from what she was taught was okay that her um, her mind is giving her pushback on it um, and. This pushback is coming in the form of a low libido, where sex is a battle. A pushback can also come in the form of depression, um, needing to overeat, uh, any other kinds of avoidance uh, mechanisms. So in her case, it's just sex isn't fun. And it used to be fun. She said she would get wet from cuddling. It was exciting. It was fabulous. And now, now that they're living together, it's not as fun anymore. And she'd like it to be fun again. Uh, part of this work she does with her boyfriend, I think, but part of it, or a lot of it, she has to do herself because she can figure out what is her issue. What does she need from her boyfriend? What does she need from herself? As you can see, I'll be coming back to this a lot. So uh, I'm not going to say your name um, because I don't know if you lady gave me your real name. Um, but the young lady will know that it's she uh, that I'm speaking of. It's her? It's her that I'm speaking of. Anyway, Tuesdays with Nina at gmail.com. Please send in your questions, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.